And so, Brother Tracy, we're just going to come on, come. <laughs> Are you all you good? Yes, sir. All right, there we go. I am good. Look at there. Hey, <laughs> I'm already turned on, but you know, yeah. glory be to God. Hallelujah. What an awesome, awesome time we've already had in the presence of God and how excited I am for what the Spirit of God is doing. Let's just wait just a moment before we're seated, before we do anything else. I do want you to know there's an unusual anointing, both in the room and in these meetings. I have seen into the Spirit on some things He will do if you'll believe it and receive it. So, before I say anything else, I salute you. I'm not one to move much by tangible manifestation, but did you physically feel it come on you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whoo! Uh, now, sister, that's his witness <laughs> that you won't leave like you came. Hallelujah. Something just came on you, and you're taking it home. Yes. It's not geographical, it's the covenant. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. It. it works for anywhere, anytime, any place, for anything they can believe. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And it's in this room right now. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Supernatural things are happening. Yes. We'll get into that with the ministry of the word, but I do just need to announce this. The inner workings, I kept, uh, by, and when we were in worship, there's any number of healings that are taking place as I speak right now by the Spirit of God. But the inner workings of, he said to me, of people's, uh, Lord, how do I say that more effectively? Your, your organ, anything that's out of order in the internal major organs of your system. He said to me, he's reworking them tonight. Recreating them tonight. And there's some things that are going to stop from this, from the entrance into the presence of this anointing. For the anointing's breaking its power. And it's going to stop. And it's going to reverse. And it's going to begin to become normal. Glory be to God. And I'm telling you by the authority of the name of Jesus. Livers are going to work. Kidneys are going to work. Stomachs and small and large intestinal tracts, they're going to work. Hearts are going to work. Lungs are going to work. And all of the bloodstream is going to work supernaturally. In synchronicity with one another, your body is going to stop fighting itself. And your body's going to come into unity. And the organs are going to work with one another as they should in partnership. To release their each individual supply to make the whole body healthy. And it's going to affect your blood. It's going to affect the way that your body totally dissolves and, com and, and releases all kind of toxin and poison. And, what, and things you knew you shouldn't have put in there. And the results... Of putting it in there in disobedience sometimes because some of you knew you needed to make a change and you didn't. And now you're dealing with it. And now you're condemned and your conscience is bothering you and you can't seem to get past it. But there's something in the room that's making you worthy. The righteousness of God is about to make it all right. So cut loose of those other things. Old things are passed away and everything's brand new. It's a new moment for you. Glory be to God. 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 I remember this comes up in my spirit, so I'm going to say it again. I haven't said it since then. Uh, probably almost half a year ago, I was in uh, Buffalo City, actually East London, South Africa, in the, in the faith dome that's there. And uh, when I got up the very first night, the Spirit of God began to move after, after an extensive period of worship. I heard Him say, tell the people. He talked to me about Bartimaeus. And he said, who is it? And Jesus was passing by. And, and the Lord said, now, 
tell the people this is their passing by moment. And it ripped, through, it ripped through that dome and miracles began to happen. And I haven't heard it since then until tonight. Now a supernatural recreative work is about to go to work in, in the bodies of those that will receive it and that need it and all of us need it to some degree. When I quote this to you and we know that all things work together for the good to them oh man. Who are the called into peace, wholeness, sozo, and shalom from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Now go to work anointing in the name of Jesus to produce that peace. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And I'm just going to say by the Holy Ghost, he just said, now you tell all the ministers it's going to carry over into their morning meeting. Some of you can't be here again in the morning because I understand your assignment. He said, he said, carry this. It's about to, it will carry into your morning meeting. The res residue of this is going to go with you to the saints. Thank you, Lord. You're assigned to. Glory Thank to you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory. In fact, I'd encourage you probably to have a healing line before you preach. I'm serious. I'm not kidding. I'm not, I'm not kidding at all. Glory. Hallelujah. Because there's going to be an unusual anointing that's going to descend in the house during worship and uh, flow with it. Amen. Glory be to God. Yes. Woo, glory be to God. Well, hallelujah. Aren't you glad Jesus is in the house? I do have some other things to say to you which we want to get to. And uh, Brother uh, Gerald Tid and your Sister Tadasi, thank you again for having me here. This great house, all of you great folks and partners and wonderful folks that have driven and come and uh, of course our team is with us. I think you've met John Sosby in the past, glory to God, and we were up front today and he actually, you know, landed that thing. We just, I mean, it was, it was amazing, praise the Lord, just, we stopped before we got to the end of the runway and we didn't run off the, out of the, run off the runway. We didn't bounce three or four times. It just well, turned out really marvelous. Praise the Lord. <laughs> We've done that once or twice, haven't we? <laughs> Uh, no, oh no! Stop. I'm not going to give him a chance to say another thing. If he, if he ever says I bounce an aircraft, just know this. I log every landing I make. Even if it's three on the same runway. <laughs> I have been known to skip like a rock, but that is very seldom. Praise the Lord. I like it better when they say, uh, are we on the ground yet? That's, 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 uh, I like those better. Praise the Lord. Anyway, I didn't mean to get into that, but. Uh, uh, and this is, some of you might have met him at our place, but these folks are uh, got a great anointing on their lives. These are ministry gifts that are called to help us and, of course, carry an anointing and partnership and all of the things they're assigned to do with us. And this is Jim Legrand, and we're so grateful that he's here. Praise the Lord. And Brother Clifford Pearson. Glory to God. They brothers and the Holy Ghost. So uh, anything you need, I'm sure they can help you with. And so. Let me, let me uh, just say to you that there's not very many of these on the table, but all of this are things that in partnership, here's the deal. Everybody has a part. And I refuse to enter into a partnership without doing my part first. I'm going to sow that seed up front. He told me wherever I went, uh, this is, I'm cutting to the chase now very, because I want to get into this next thing. So this is very simple. But I was in Mississippi, and I'll never forget it. And so I think I can make about a one-minute statement about this, and you'll get it. This is a word group. I sense it in my spirit by, you know, for the most part, it's a believer's meeting. You know that when the prophet, when it dried up for him, the Lord said, I've commanded a widow woman to sustain you there. Get up and go to Zarephath. When he got there, here's the thing, and this is the one-minute synopsis. There is no evidence in the written account of that story that God had said anything to this woman before he got there. Now that to me is the most stunning part of that whole piece. 
Because God told, did he lie? Did he lie to the prophet? He said, I've commanded a widow woman to sustain you. And when he got there, she didn't even know he was coming. So how does that translate? And I was in Mississippi, and the Lord just, I'm, I'm literally ministering along, and suddenly it opened up. I mean, it's just, all I can say is it just opened up, and I saw into that thing. And he said, from this day forward, he said, I want to show you how this works and to teach the people how it works so that they'll know. Because people don't know how it works. And in fact, he talked to me about how that when Mary uh, saluted Elizabeth, the baby left in Elizabeth's womb when she heard her voice. See, Jesus said, my sheep hear me. They know my voice. Something happens inside the hearer when they hear the right voice they're supposed to be connected to. People aren't looking for churches to go to. They're looking for the voice they're connected to. Come on now. Uh, that is, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. So good. All right, so saying that, the Lord said to me, he said, when I commanded her, was when he told her, bake me a cake first. Yeah. When he said it, she almost didn't do it. Because yeah. it took her out of where her focus was. She was not aware the anointing she was in the presence of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She did not know that she and her family and the prophet's budget was going to be paid for a year off of that one act. I mean, it says he stayed with her many days. That means she had such a financial miracle that it released every debt, took care of her household budget for a whole year, and on top of it, she underwrote the ministry's budget for a year off of that one seed. My God. Because it wasn't... Are you, I mean, you go back and read it. You'll say that. Now, hey. <laughs> hey. So the Lord said to me, he said, uh, he said, there's some folks in every meeting. And, and I mean, I'm telling you what the head of the church said. Now, you can, you can say, well, he's there. He is. You know, he's found out a slick way to forget it. Then don't you dare go touch a thing back there. We don't need that kind of cynicism in our partnership base. Yes. Yeah. It hinders. It won't help us. Plus, plus, if you hadn't heard from God, you won't follow through with it anyway. Yeah, it's the truth. <laughs> but he said to me, the head of church said to me, in every meeting you do, and uh, no, I won't go that far. I mean, I could, but this has been said to me more than once. It's been said to me first by a prophet of God, and then later when I was slack and didn't want to step up and do it, then the head of the church said it to me personally in Mississippi. And he said to me, <clears throat> um, in every meeting you do, he said to me, there are people. Of course, he made me to know some it would be quite a few, some it would be one or two, but whatever it would be, it didn't matter. In every meeting, he said, there are people that when they hear your voice, yeah. maybe hearing it for the first time, but they know. Come on. They know when they hear it. Come on. I'll do it in them. They'll know as soon as they hear it. Good. That they're supposed to connect with that anointing. Amen. So all I'm really want to do is everything I know to do myself. I'm not looking for another meeting or another project or another cause. I got enough to do right now. But I want to do everything I'm assigned to do, and I want to know what that is, and I want to be connected to the right things and have the resources to do the thing into the full what I am called to do. No one can do everything, but everybody can do something. I'm going to get my something done. And with us, just because of the great grace of God, there's a few things that tell about the ministry if you haven't heard it. And this is so far outdated, but it is such a blessing still. At least it gives you a footprint of things that are now far beyond. But, and there's a, there's, here's, here's, what, here's what we do. Our assignment in partnership is not to get something from you, but to get something to you. Your response on your end, prayer, faith, and any financial part you're to play in getting the gospel that blessed you here to the next meeting to someone else that you may never meet. I can guarantee you two things will happen. One, whatever it is you determine and purpose in your heart to plant monthly will come into your hands over and above your normal income supernaturally. And it won't just come that amount. It'll come double that amount because my faith is in there with you. And you'll get to sow what you purposed 
and you'll have the extra over and above. Amen. That'll happen. Amen. If you'll obey God, he will, he will, he'll minister seed to the soul. Yes. Number two, it'll increase. Amen. I can guarantee you because the anointing increases upon it. So if you're called to do that, let us be the ones to sow the first seed. We only have a limited number of these packets that we brought. But what you would need to do at the table in order to do that, each one of these is just a simple packet. We didn't come in product to sell and CDs. All that's available on the website. You can go download those and listen to all the messages. But this is this particular packet, and there's several. Each, each has two books in it. We want to be the first one to sow revelation knowledge into your life. Amen. Glory to God. And um, so you can pick and choose from the titles there. Uh, when you fill this out and, and hand it in at the table with your name and address and so forth because that harvest letter we write monthly is something that we're commissioned to do to teach people how to harvest. And there's a few of those back there from a few months ago. Glory to God. Next one's about almost right in the mail. And I suggest you read it when you get it. It's heaven's visited me the last two or three months. I'm telling you. Wow. But um, anyway. By the way, the ministers are in the room. Uh, we have a ministers and leadership conference coming on June the 20th or the 22nd. If you've never attended one, are there any ministers in the room who have who suggest they come? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's then we have a bookmark called "Why We Preach Faith," and it'll just help you not only connect with us, remember to pray for us, but also it'll give you all the scriptural references. There's uh, there are 15 reasons why we preach faith. I don't preach doubt and unbelief. I preach faith. Glory to God. Faith that overcomes the world. So. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and uh, we thank you for blessing us because even the team that's here is blessed by all of our partners. Amen. And I'm so grateful. So, John, would you take that if you don't mind? And so the bottom line is, is if you could leave that at the table, one of these gentlemen, I guess they'll draw straws to see who's going to stand at the table and receive that. But anyway, one of these gentlemen are going to be at the table to receive those. And if you'll write legibly and not in tongues, we won't have to fast and pray to figure out how to send that letter to you. And, uh, and so I understand faith commitments, and you may not know exactly uh, you know, what it is you're to sow monthly at this moment, but uh, so you may be awkward about filling in the dollar. That's fine. Let's, let's just get started. Let us do our part. Let us sow into your life. You pray and ask the Lord. And we trust you're going to obey God. That's not the point. But we want to immediately get something in your hands. Father, I'm asking you now, by the divine great grace of God, by the endowment and the endowment of the very anointing and the office that's on my life and the lives of our partners and the lives of these ministers and the lives of this team that has come to this, this meeting in this moment in kingdom history. Mm. That your word would go forth in power, unabated, unabated by any force. It would not return to you void. It would accomplish Oh, read to God. That which you please. It will prosper where it is sent. And I will make my mouth to open and boldly make known the mystery of the gospel as I should. I'm asking you to think through my mind and speak through my lips. And I thank you for signs, wonders, miracles, mighty deeds, supernatural happenings, manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit and the anointing that breaks the yoke off of every person. And we will be extremely sober to give you all the glory and all the honor. For we recognize that if you could do nothing without your Father, if you could do nothing by yourself, who are we? Oh, we thank you that we have nothing if it didn't come from you. There is no anointing that did not come from you. There isn't but one ministry and one call and one name that's above every name. And we're here tonight to exalt that name to obey the command of this portion of the ministry of the head of the church and to accomplish what you've assigned us to accomplish. We thank you that these things shall surely be and that you will prove that the words I speak are not my own, <laughs> that they're from another world. We have angelic help in the room, Father, I thank you. Oh, glory be to God. And we just thank you, Father, for entrances and openings. And we absolutely expect them to gloriously and immediately manifest to the glory of God. In Jesus' name. I just heard the Spirit of God say while well, I was praying just there at the end, 
this means many things. It's not only one person, but there's a specific person in my spirit I see. But it's an anointing in the room available to many that have been even, even maybe not necessarily believing for it, but just beginning to have thoughts about it and ask the Lord about it. But I'm telling you by the Spirit, promotion is in the room. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Your voice has been attacked spiritually and naturally. But I'll strengthen it from this <clears throat> night, saith the Lord God. I heard the Lord say, so don't overdrive it. Do it by faith. I'm going to begin to adjust the way you attack the delivery of the Word of God. And it's going to be more effective than you've ever dreamed. Because you're not going to have to use physical effort to stir the people up. Get out of the physical with your preaching, says the Lord. And get into faith by my spirit. And your words will be sharp. And they'll cut like a knife through butter. Know this, the people will be helped. And I'm going to train you how to do this. You'll have to use your faith, saith the Lord. Because it'll be an adjustment on a habit. Because you have followed the pattern of others. But I have put a coat on you that's uniquely yours. Look well to your personality. Carry it out the way I tell you to carry it out. Thank you. And you shall see it will break down every wall. It shall overcome racial barriers and all kinds of barriers. Yeah. For I have sent you and I am in you and your voice will carry my power. Let faith-filled words do it. And you'll see greater results and they will increase and increase in the coming days. I love you, son. I've called you to do this. Now I'm going to help you. For it is not your church. It is my church. So represent me well. Don't represent yourself. Represent me well, saith the Lord. Whoa. Glory be to God. Well, glory be to God. Oh, glory, be. glory be to God. Woo! You may be seated. Let's just give the Lord a hand cap. Glory to God. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't you love Jesus tonight? Well, we've already had church. Hallelujah. What a time in the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, the Spirit of God spoke to me about these, these meetings. And so, therefore, there is an anointing in this room for an impartation because of these meetings and because of the house and because of the invitation of the pastor that will rip through this place and create a manifestation of what the purpose of the meeting is in the ministry itself. But for anybody that's here, that's called to be here, when we're connected, that's one thing about partnership is that's not only available that's why sometimes people have an issue when you just when you come to a church meeting and you're inside a church, and uh, they've got to get out of that mindset, right? Yeah. That you're going to another person's church. Now, are we the church or are we not? Yeah. <laughs> so, what's preached in here? If it's the gospel, does it belong just to this church? No. Well, of course not. <laughs> so, you need to realize that uh, I want to say this before we get started. And by the way, while we're doing that, open your Bibles to the Book of Hebrews, chapter six. But what I want to share with you uh, as you're opening there is this thought. Most people are not aware that <clears throat> when the anointing is in manifestation in the house, there are, we're so finite in the way we think. Because many times when a word comes from heaven, 
Uh, the problem is we try to fill in the blanks because it immediately goes through the filter of our mind yeah. of what we've been thinking in the natural that we think that means. It always means so much more. And when there's an anointing in the house, so you got to be cautious about putting your own interpretation on prophecies or anything else. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, I can give you some examples, but it just elongate getting where I need to go. So, but let me just give you this example in, from the ministry of Jesus. How many of you are aware <clears throat> that Jairus said, now follow me here. This is huge. I want to connect a dot or two for you. Jairus said, my daughter is at home. She's at the point of death. He said, come lay your hand on her. She shall live. I mean, he made his, I mean, he made his faith statement. Now, Jairus was the ruler of the synagogue in Capernaum where most of the mighty miracles of Jesus took place. He's on his way. There is, we can't even begin to imagine, because there's already an entourage, he's already in the street. There's people following him. They're thronging him. I mean, he says, that they've seen Jesus, he's the miracle worker. They're following him to this house. They want to see what happens. So they've got all of this going on. People are pulling him every direction. Okay, while he's on the way to raise her from the dead, and she was how old? Anybody know? How old was she? Twelve years old. So Jairus, the moment he said that, activated an anointing in Jesus. So he's on the way to Jairus' house. And while he's on the way, there was a woman. Are you listening to me now? There was a woman that came in the press behind. Who suffered many things and many physicians and grew nothing better but rather grew worse. And she had chronically had this illness for how many years? Well. See, what happened is that anointing was active in him. He was going to do something with it. She entered into that anointing with her faith. Oh, it stopped her 12-year issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's not a coincidence. No. No. We have to understand that the levels of anointing are huge because um, there's individual anointing. Everybody has an anointing that's a believer. Holy Ghost is in them. But there are layers, levels of anointings, and then there's anointing to accomplish purposes and tasks, to fulfill offices, to do assignments. So the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, they each have an anointing. That is beyond the normal believer's anointing when they're filled with the Holy Ghost. It's an anointing to accomplish a task for the people, right. which is why a lot of people die sick but have a great healing ministry because they don't know how to get it on their own faith wow. because they're not anointed to heal the self. Oh, wow. 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 So, you know, they, it could probably be hundreds of people, just all kinds of miracles, and, and just and die sick. Well, you don't know what's in the heart or the conscience of that person. Maybe God told them to do something. They didn't fully care out their ministry. Maybe they made a mistake, but, but, how, but the Lord was merciful and it didn't become public. But they, they're carrying all that around on the inside. And it's affecting their own heart and their own faith. You can't judge all of that at face value. You don't have proper information to judge. You have to understand spiritual things and how they work. And laws can get set in motion. Right. Well, now here's the point behind that. So there's not only individual anointings, there's ministry anointings. And within ministry anointings, there can be special anointings upon people within that same sphere of anointing. Amen. For example, Brother Hagin had the anointing of a prophet on him when he was in the earth, Hagin Sr. But then Jesus appeared to him and put his finger in his hands and said, I've given you a, a special anointing. To minister to the sick. Amen. So he had a special anointing. So there are unusual anointings, special anointings. Right. But there is no anointing greater than the corporate anointing. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is when he's walking down that street, that faith energy 
is building. Wow. I know there are a lot of people touching and thronging him, but there's a hope and an excitement. Yeah. And that woman yeah. heard it, entered into it. He's on his way. He's carrying this to Jairus' house. The point I'm trying to make is whatever anointings and manifestation corporately in the room, you can have. Yeah. If you just recognize it and enter into it. Exactly. That's really critically important. Because so many times we sit in the chair and we say, Lord, would you just give me a word tonight? Well, he's going to give you one right here. Yeah. You understand? So when you see this thing moving, it is so critically important because there's always, I would say, the vast majority. And we can talk about miracles on six continents that have happened now over decades and decades. I mean, stunning, creative miracles that many ministers live and die and never see one of. I'm talking about recreative miracle works of power and might and raising the dead I'm talking about Amen. kind of stuff. But did you know that of all the, now I, I would venture to not even have a, it'd be a total guess to know how many thousands of healings and miracles we've seen. But I would say over 90% of them happened in meetings where I was ministering alone. Huh? And I heard, and I heard about it, that it happened in that meeting when I was there wow. going down the healing line. We never got testimonies or anything. I'd come back the next year, and they say, "Let me tell you what happened." Come on, amen. Come on, good. I remember walking out of North Miami Beach one night, or one, yeah, it was a one, an evening meeting. Actually, no, it was a morning meeting. I'd ministered in the morning, and a huge uh, healing line and all that. The, I mean, the power of God, the working of miracles, just phenomenal things. And uh, so I'm, I'm ministering to the people. And so there's a lady that, that's standing by the door. And so she, I'm walking out, and she was uh, actually, I guess, born Latin America. I don't know what country she was from, but she did have, she had good English, but her English was second language after her adult years. So her accent was extremely thick. And so I didn't understand it at first. So I had to ask her to repeat it. And she says, uh, and so she grabbed me at the door. Uh, Tracy, but Tracy, she said, uh, for 22 years, 22 years. She said, I deef. I said, you what? But she, when she, I, was, I got after about the third time, she pointed to her ears. She said, because I had just stuck my fingers in her ears in the healing line by the Spirit of God. Because she didn't tell me what to do. I didn't ask him what was wrong with them. And I put my finger, I said, be open. I was under the anointing and saw it in the Spirit. And I did, I did, but later on, I realized that's what happened. Well, power got hit her like it did all these other people. So she shut the door. She said, 22 years, 22 years. I deef, I deef, I can hear. And I mean, we just rejoiced there at the door. That was on the way out. I mean, we had. Amen. Now, in that meeting, we had a lady that was thrown from a car, had steel rods in her back, disappeared, totally recreated with no one there. She did a back bend, touched the top of her head to the floor. Literally did an arch like the limbo. Somebody, you could crawl on your hands and knees under her. There is no usher. And she comes back up. And this is when she came to herself. I'm talking about creative miracles, stunning, astounding creative miracles. Well, I'm grateful. And so many miracles happened that I never heard about. Next year, I'm sitting on the front row in a set of meetings in that church. And the usher that was helping me in that healing line's 10-year-old daughter was in the line. Didn't know it, but she was blind to one eye. And the optometrist or ophthalmologist or whatever, whoever the doctor was, said she'd never see out of that eye. And uh, he tested me, well, this is a year later. And he passed me a note because he didn't want to interrupt anything. We're in the middle of a meeting. And the note says, you need to know this. Last year when you were here, you laid hands on all those people. Yeah, all those. He said, my daughter, 10 years old, was blind. Her eye got opened in that meeting, you know, and I'm just like, whoa! And I just began to rejoice on the front row a year later. Say, I never heard about it. I never knew about it. My point is, there's miracles happening in this room. Right. Oh, glory to God. And my whole point is, open your heart. I'm telling glory. Woo! Because the kind of recreative miracles I saw in internal organs cannot be validated in this room at this point yeah. to what's already happened. Yeah. But the reports are going to come back. Yeah. Diabetes has just been destroyed. Yeah. Failing livers have yeah. just been healed. Yeah. Uh, all kind of kidney uh, function has been restored to whole. It's been... I, hear, I hear the Lord telling me to say it this way. Jesus wants His body to work. You're in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. You're bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
So the point is these meetings clearly have a purpose and, and uh, we'll get it accomplished. Each meeting stands alone, but it doesn't stand alone. There'll be a flow into the morning. But just because you can't be here doesn't mean that you didn't need to be here tonight or God knows all those things. Amen. You understand? That's what's critically important here. So take hold of however far we get in the next few minutes. Because heaven wants to do some things. Have you found Hebrews chapter 6? Yes. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 6, blessed be the name of the Lord. It says starting in verse 1, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Glory to God. Now the Amplified Classic talks about what that Greek word means. And uh, I, uh, I do know the word to pronounce it, but this isn't a Greek lesson, so let's just, let's just talk about what it ultimately means. Perfection doesn't mean what we think perfect is in the natural uh, in the English language. It literally is the word for completion or completeness or maturity. So he's basically saying, and the Amplified Classic brings this out, the Amplified Classic says, let us advance, advancing steadily toward the completeness and perfection that belong to spiritual maturity. Now say maturity. All right, now let's back up a little bit. And uh, because I'm getting to something specific, obviously, but I want to back up about Jesus. And, and it says, um, let's just read verse 6 of the previous chapter. It says in uh, chapter 5, verse 6, As he saith in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. <laughs> All right, so we see that this is Jesus, and this is a calling on his life as Messiah. And he stepped into this office after the order of the priesthood, Melchizedek, which is yeah. Sidek, Sidek, Jehovah Sidkenu, mm -hmm. the Lord God our righteousness. Yeah. Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Yeah. So that's the order of his priesthood. Jesus was a preacher of righteousness. It's what he came to do and fulfill in us that caused us to be ripped from the grip. Every grip Satan had hold of, on us. When we were declared righteous, Amen. <laughs> had the enemy known what he was doing, had the enemy known that when he killed Jesus, yes. we would be decreed, declared righteous, he'd have never done it. Because the moment we got declared righteous, we were ripped from his grip. He had no claim on us ever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, as much as I'd love to go down that track, I've got one specific assignment, but we've got to lay the platform to get there. So Jesus is after the order of Melchizedek. So it says, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. So we see a key component here. Huh? The fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And, of course, that word suffer means the things he experienced. So, using his faith to resist the enemy brought him into a working revelation knowledge about how this covenant works to defeat the devil and for him to get done what he's in the earth to do. In fact, I'll Hold your finger there and read this verse with me in the book of Proverbs. Now, before I read this verse, Proverbs chapter 3, but before I read the verse, I want to just be very clear to you in no uncertain terms. Experience is not the teacher. Experience can teach you nothing. All right, so understand that. You will have some experiences where the enemy is going to try to stop you from obeying God. Now, <clears throat> you can have a failure experience mm -hmm. that you never recover from, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is not the will of God, no. which means the experience couldn't produce anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. That's good. It's only the people that take the word in that experience and apply it yeah. to prove it works. Yeah. Let, me, let me just, yeah. let me, yeah. <laughs> I just want to be clear about this so we can just kill all these religious cows in the room. 
that everything we go through has some high purpose. No, no, no. The enemy has a purpose, all right, but it's to steal, kill, and destroy. And you need to stop his purpose with the Word of God. Because Jesus has a purpose. It's for you to walk in victory and peace. And you will overcome every obstacle. So it's not about the experience. Amen. All right, so uh, I know we're on our way to Proverbs, but it seems like the Holy Ghost should be the teacher, so we're going to follow him. So let's go to Romans chapter 5, a set of verses here that I think will make the point that I just made. Romans chapter 5, it says, and let's just start in verse 1. We're going to read five verses now. Therefore, being justified or made righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Ooh, glory to God. So this is, requires us to use our faith to get access. Now, say that word three times. Access. access. Now say it three times. Access. 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 That means there are certain things you have to do to get granted access. Otherwise, you don't, have, you, don't, you don't have the combination to open the door to get into the supply. Yeah. Yeah. There is a supply that will put you through it, put you over it. It will break the power of the enemy coming against you. Yeah. But you've got to grant, that, you got to access that grace. Amen. Yeah. And you do it by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but, now look, we glory in tribulations. Mm-hmm. Also knowing. Tribulation works patience. What does that mean? Waiting a long time because when God says something, it'll take a lifetime to get it? No, that's not what the word means there. The word patience, there's two Greek words for the word patience. And that word patience is huge because the vast majority of the time, it doesn't mean long suffering. The vast majority of the time that word's used in the New Testament, it means steadfastness or consistency. He's talking about consistent application of your faith. Through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. You don't inherit it by doing it sometime, by doing it part-time. But no, there's got to be, you can't waver back and forth. You've got to have consistent application of your faith. You can't take the antibiotic three days when it's prescribed for ten. You can't break open the capsule and rub it on your body when you're supposed to take it internally. So you've you've got to do it as written. But if you'll do it as written, it'll work. Amen. Amen. And so, so he says this. He says, tribulation worketh patience. Now, this is the main reason people don't cast the devil out. They don't have patience. The devil has more staying power than we have patience to consistently demand his release of the territory. Because he has no right to be there. He's a squatter. But only so, not only so, verse 3, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, patience experience. See the word experience there? That's, that's, that's the word I was looking for. The experience and experience hope. And hope makes not a shame. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. For when we were without strength in due time, Christ died for the end of God, so forth and so on. Now I can, I, I'm tell, in fact, uh, look at what it says in verse 10. And I'm going to read the Amplified Classic. By the time you get down to verse 10, he says, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, it is so much certain now that we are reconciled that we shall be saved, daily delivered. From sin's dominion through his resurrection life. (laughs) Did you know there's a daily deliverance? Now you need to understand that in every experience there's a daily deliverance. That's called our daily bread. Oh glory be to God. Woo, I'm receiving mine today. Back up the truck. Beep, 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 beep. Daily he loads me with benefits. And one of them is I get daily deliverance. Hallelujah. Daily deliverance. That means there's deliverance on Saturday night. It's not the only time you take a bath, you know. Praise the Lord. All right, so. (laughs) Glory to God. Now, that means then that my experience produces hope. So the experience could not be one of failure. 
Because if it creates hope in every other experience, it must mean I got through that and I got the victory in that. I accessed the grace and the grace of God was sufficient to deal with the situation. It brought me out. And I've experienced it enough to know that no matter what I'm in, there's a way out of this. Oh, glory to God. Woo! Glory to God. So experience it in the teacher. It's the application of the grace of God that comes on me to do what flesh can't do that strengthens me in my weakness to break the back of the devil, bring me out into victory, even though the odds are against me every time daily. Because he's raised from the dead and he is alive and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's my experience. That all they that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But out of them all, everything that came against me, the Lord delivered me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and he delivers them. There's a decade of deliverance. There's deliverance in this room from whatever you're facing right now. There's deliverance out of that financial need. There's deliverance out of that doctor's report. There's a deliverance out of that lawsuit. There's Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And there's even deliverance out of you going your own way, getting you back in the right place. Even if you're... So we're going to wind up back in Hebrews in about you know, a few seconds here. But let's read this book, let's read this word in Proverbs. It's out of the mouth of every, two or three witnesses, every word is established. Look at Proverbs 3, now verse 13. And I want to read Proverbs 3, 13 in the Amplified Classic. Happy, blessed, fortunate, enviable is the man who finds skillful and godly wisdom and the man who gets understanding. Drawing it forth from God's Word and life's experiences. See, Christianity means nothing to anyone if it doesn't grant them power over the devil. This, this weak, mamby-pamby, religious, traditional Christianity... It ain't going to fly in the last days. If Christianity means anything, it means you get power of the devil that's trying to kill you, and you can have a life. And that, that, that power's in this room right here, and we, it's meant to work. It's meant to work. It's designed to work. See, it's why we preach, so that there will be manifestation. That's the purpose of preaching. Yeah. Manifestation. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We're not trying to educate your head. You got, right. In fact, that's a problem. Yeah. Your head's fighting you already. Yeah. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> no, we're after otherworldly power. We're after the release of this power. Yeah. Now, now, I do want to say this because Brother Joe, he was on it over the offering, and so I, I, I won't get deep into it because it's not the assignment tonight, except I want to say to you that the Scripture tells us in Ephesians 1 that He would grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, right? Does it not say that? Yes. So when you get the knowledge of Him, it says that we would understand the riches of the glory. Do you hear me? Yes. Get a revelation yeah. of the riches Come on. of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power that comes toward us when we believe it. Here's the point. Power is a part of those riches. Power, power is prosperity. Glory to God. It is He that giveth thee power to get wealth. Power produces prosperity. Power to go get it. Power, you can't buy power. You don't have enough gold to buy power. So, so his connection there is not only just a revelation, a partnership. It is spiritual law. That when we're talking about the riches of his glory, one of the things that come out of the treasure house when we tap the riches of what belongs to us, manifestation of the provision of the wealth we have access to, is when... Boom! Power. power 
power comes on us that money came by to get something done that you can't do in the natural. Amen. 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 It comes out of sowing and reaping. That's why you need to get connected to the right anointing because if the anointing breaks the yoke, the anointing is power and power is the anointing. It's the Holy Ghost in operation. Spirit of power in operation. Spirit of might. Praise the Lord. And, and that's what it said about talking about worthy. If you want to attach it to Matthew 10, what you were preaching, a huge, dear God, I, I just, I'm happy enough to do it. I mean, I, I could go to Chronicles and Revelation. So he about got me on a whole other message. But let's, let's, let's read. But let's read this. Let's just read this because it'll help us. Revelation chapter 5. Let's look at verse 11. <laughs> Glory to God. Revelation 5. And behold, I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was ten thousands times ten thousand and thousands of thousands saying what? With a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain. And what? Powers at the top of the list. Power produces everything in that list. Power and riches go hand in hand. That's why you cannot, if you can't handle unrighteous mammon, if you're stuck to it and you can't release it, if you can't release your tithe, you can't release anything out of an open heaven. If you can't release an offering, you can't release power to people. It's, you can't be trusted with it. Because if you can't be trusted with a little piece of paper with a dead guy's picture on it, you sure can't be trusted with power to cast out the devil. Come on now. Just saying. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. So, so see, the true riches of power. That's what Jesus was referring to when he said about unrighteous man. It's a test to be granted access to the real stuff. Come on now. Preach. Glory be to God. Come on. Glory. All right, now that having been said, let's go back to Hebrews. Thank you, Jesus. Woo-wee! Mm. Hebrews chapter 6, it says this. <clears throat> it says, And being made perfect. Verse 9, Hebrews 5, 9. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Where did we hear that word before? Perfect. Over the next chapter. Let us go on into perfection. Let us advance. And go on into perfection. You see this? All right, so back up now. Well, then he was made perfect. Being made perfect, his completed experience made him perfectly now qualified to distribute what he had obtained. And he became the author. Glory be to God. Of eternal salvation unto them that obey Him. See, there are a lot of people that are trying to dispense things yeah. they hadn't qualified for. Yeah, come on. Wow. It's not on them to dispense. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to do it through fancy messages yeah. and charisma. Mm -hmm. Just because you can preach and get somebody excited by a mental turn of phrase, God's going to always anoint His Word. Don't confuse that with Him That's anointing right. you. Amen. Oh, did you hear what I said? God is going to always anoint His Word. Don't confuse that with Him anointing you. To speak that Word. Because when the Word is spoken, the Word will work. Because the Word carries power. It's His Word. And just because something happens and you get a miracle... That's how people get confused about these things is they see God, when a preacher gets up and he's called and he, and he uses the word and whatever, and then it works, and then he, he does something dumb. And we're having them fall right and left now. Because they've built the church on something other than revelation knowledge. It's going to crack right down the middle. 
Because there's no foundation. Yeah. Talking about staying power in the dark hour. Because this is gross darkness. And we are the answer. Come on. I hope I'm helping somebody. All right. So he says here, he says here, now, called of God. Mm. Called of God, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now, it's one thing. Now, hear me. There is a calling. I understand calling because there's one calling, the hope of his calling. I won't get into that except to say, people say, well, I'm called to preach. I'm called to pastor. Okay, that's fine. But only if God called you that. Oh, no, you didn't get that. See, you can't print a business card and call yourself apostle. If he ain't called you apostle. Amen. And there's some experience, some completed experience to manifest the fruit that go with the office to prove he called you that. Amen. So good. That's so true. Good word. That's why novices don't operate in the office of prophet. Jesus said that in an open vision to Kenneth Hagin Sr. He said novices don't operate. Now, there's a lot of ministries that are prophetic. You should be. Every ministry ought to have a prophetic edge. Do you have the Holy Ghost? Then every believer yeah. should be shown things to come. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So good. He's in you to guide you, to lead your life into safety, yeah. to direct it into the will of God. Mm -hmm. All of that is that lesser anointing every believer has. And I don't call it lesser as in as common, because it ain't common, because you see a bunch of yahoos out here calling themselves Christians and call stuff on the Holy Ghost that can't no more be the Holy Ghost than I'm Mother Goose. Because yeah. yeah. it doesn't match the Word. It's not the Holy Ghost. It's not how He talks. Yeah. Amen. So we can't call it lesser as in common because it's not common. It's rare to find a believer that hears from God. This led of the Spirit. Somebody talked to me about, man, I'm concerned about these, the state of the church. And he said, I'm just looking for some spiritual people. I said, well, you're better than I am. Glory to God, I'm just looking for some spiritual preachers. <laughs> the problem with the church being unspiritual is because I'm looking for some spiritual leaders. <laughs> I mean, they do drink of the spirit that's coming across. Yeah. You know, you realize when they're sitting there, they're drinking of the spirit of the speaker. That's why who you partner with or submit to or listen to, and every voice can't be the same. Voices of information do not rank on the same level with voice of impartation. Oh, right, anyway. <laughs> so, of whom, now look, of whom, verse 11 now, we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing as you are dull of hearing. So the hearer affects the utterance more than the preacher himself. He can know exactly what he came to say. You know, so many times I finally, I finally got past this, but I used to. See, you got to get all the selfish ambition out. You, you, gotta, you finally got to get to the place to where you didn't go in there hoping the people think you had a good message. Right. You, you got to get past all that because if you don't, you, you don't have anything to say. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because some of what you say is supposed to challenge and change them. <laughs> and you got to be bold enough to not worry about the popular opinion. Which means you're so secure that you went in there and said what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when we, when we look at it from that standpoint, there are things that you can see. And so I, I can still remember how long it took me because I didn't know these spiritual laws. And I know so many preachers that still don't know these spiritual laws. How long it took me to get to where, you know, 
I had all this. And man, it just, when the Lord ministered this to me, man, it was, man, it was just so good. I, I planned to say this. And I, I didn't get to half of that. I didn't, well, shoot, I didn't, I didn't say what I meant to say. Could that be because of the hearer? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Because the scripture says in Psalm 16, 1, preparation of heart is in man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So what we need to do is study to teach and preach as if there is no Holy Ghost and then get up and rely on the Holy Ghost as if we hadn't studied. <laughs> Because he's the teacher. Because <laughs> he has things to say. Because he knows every person in the room. Woo -wee. Some people wonder about man. Praise the Lord. So, he says we have many things to say. I resemble that remark. <laughs> and hard to be uttered seeing you're dull of hearing. <laughs> for when for the time, you, you yourselves ought to be teachers. You have need that one teach you again. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God and have become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. That means... You can arrive at a place in the spirit and not hold your ground. Let me, let me just prove that one to you. Let me just prove that one to you. It just seems like we're, we're going we're to crack the nut tonight. Get, get a little of the meat out of it. Go with me to the book of Revelation. Jesus was talking to the church there. And uh, churches, seven churches directly addressed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And uh, I want you to see a statement he made to one of these churches. This is a powerful, powerful, powerful statement. Glory be to God. And it is in Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. Notice what it says. He said to this church, Actually, let's just read verse 10 to flow down into it. Because you've kept the word of my patience, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which you have, that no man take your crown. It's not just enough to believe you've received and achieved a miracle. It's something else to hang on to it. You got to you got to hold the territory. You got to hold the seat. You've got to hold the position. You've got to be an occupational force. Amen. Empty's not enough. You've got to get filled up so there's no room for it to come back. Yeah. Amen. 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 So now that revelation, let's just let's just make sure that we just nail this down so that people are clear about the spiritual law here. Go with me to uh, let's see here. I believe it would be Third John. No, no, 2 John. Let's go to 2 John. Yeah, and let's go to the Amplified Classic. 2 John, verse 8. Look to yourselves. Take care that you may not lose. Throw away or destroy all that we and you have labored for, but that you may persevere until you win and receive back a perfect reward in full. I don't know about you, but I'm staying the course. Yeah, that's good. There isn't a hint of quit in me. Right. Amen. Come on. Come on. Woo! Glory be to God. <laughs> Woo! Not a smidgen. You can't find it. Crack me open. You can't find quit. And I'm guaranteed a full reward. And time is not a factor to me. Whew. Glory to God. I mean, I serve the ancient of days. The Lord that sits on the hub of eternity. He made residence in my heart and I'm an ambassador down here for a little while. And he hadn't changed his mind. Why should I? 
The gifts and call of God are without repentance. Amen. Get on your horse. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, now back to Hebrews. So we can see then that these people had achieved a place they slipped from. In fact, if we were to go back a few chapters, we don't need to, but he says we need to give earnest heed to the things we've heard. This is Hebrews 2, lest at any time you'd let them slip. So you can let things slip. Amen? And uh, I like what it says in the Psalms. I think it's Psalm 98, 11 or 12, something like that. Somewhere in there, and I get the reference right if, if that's way back in the memory. But basically he says, Lord, when my foot slippeth, your mercy, O Lord, it held me up. Aren't you glad when you feel like things are slipping, that's the most important time to not move by feelings and operate by yeah. faith. Come on. Yeah. Because my anchor holds inside yeah. the veil. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Woo, Jesus went inside the veil for me. Yes, sir. Yeah. And he's the anchor of my hope. Glory yeah. be to God. And when it's past hoping, I hope on in faith. Because I know that my body might be dead, but my seed will be like the stars of the sky. And oh, glory be to God. When, it, when it's past time, it should have already happened. I'm telling you, angels are going tick, 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 and cranking open the doors for me right now. Right now. Glory to God right now. Say, I believe I receive. It's happening for me. It's working. It's moving right now. Everything I've confessed, everything I've believed, everything I've sown for, everything I'm called to, everything he said to me, all those purposes, I contend for them. I take hold of it right now. It's mine right now, right here in this room. I'm not stopping short. Glory to God. Woo! I'm digging in, coach. Glory to God. That person's a force to be reckoned with for the devil. Because the devil's a quitter at heart. Yeah. Yes, he is a loser. He has no staying power. He can't hold his ground. So good. If you'll just hold yours, he'll give his up. Come on. Yeah. Woo! I don't know about you. Man, I'm... <laughs> Glory. Woo! Glory to God. So... He says, we have become such as have need of milk. Now, obviously, he's going to make a reference to, you know, as newborn babes desire the sense of milk of the words, you may grow thereby. Milk is associated with babies who can't eat meat, who are not mature enough to process it and uh, chew it. So he says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. He's a baby. Now, the New International Version reads this way. NIV says, anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. So, so clearly the number one thing every new believer ought to be taught right out of the gate. Bam! I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Because it deals with shame and guilt and fear and condemnation. You get a revelation of the new creation, who you were made to be. Old things are passed away. Everything's brand new. Glory be to God. Amen. And he was made to be sin who knew no sin that I might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. That means I've got more, it means I've got more right to that building than anybody else. Yes, Years ago, we had one, a dramatic miracle take place. Federal law was overturned. And an interstate was moved off of our property. And they had the law on their side, the law of eminent domain. I said, God, how did we move that? I was saying for a long time, Mark 11, 23 and 24, move an interstate. I kept saying that. And then one day it dawned on me, wait a minute. They weren't stealing their property. They were going to pay us for it. And they had the law on their side. So exactly how did we get that moved? And just that quick, the Lord answered me. He said, easy. The righteousness of faith supersedes the righteousness of the law. <laughs> and I realized I had more right to that property than the federal government did. The United States of America had less right to that property than I did because they represent a nation. I represent a kingdom and the king of the kingdom told me to have it. Glory to God. Woo! Glory to God. Later on, recently, the last couple of years, I saw the very angel that moved it. I literally, with my eyes open, had an open vision, saw the angel that moved it. That's another story. 
but that same angel that moved the interstates over our international television there. Come on. He's helping me right now. Glory to God. I'm telling you, these angels, are, they're in the room as we speak. Amen. Somebody needs a miracle in your teeth and supernaturally right now. You're going to have help in that area. God's going to literally begin the process of healing and recreating. We've, had, we've literally had teeth grow when there were none. We've had false teeth become permanent. I'm talking about recreated. Um, tonight, there's an anointing for teeth in the room. Glory to God. We had a lady that lost all of her teeth in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. I got a word like that about the Spirit. And I was walking down the healing line, and uh, she said, I receive it now. And her, her boyfriend, who wasn't kind of believer, you know, he poked at her like that. He said, what makes you think of it? He said, because he said it, and that's my word. Well, she had, had done so much meth, it rotted her teeth out of her mouth. Wow. wow. Two weeks later, she runs up at the Christmas party and shows the pastor. Pull, he said, it made me uncomfortable because, like, she got in my face. <laughs> ah, ah! Pulled her jaws back, and little pearly white teeth were coming in, growing wow. in. Thank you, Lord. Whole set of teeth grew in. Wow. I'm talking about power. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it's in this room. Come on. Yes, sir. I can feel it. I'm on the edge of something right now. Can you sense it? Oh, Lord, we receive it. <clears throat> we receive it. We receive it. In Jesus' name. Well, the Lord just kind of, I've never had him say this quite to me this way. He just said something to me. He said, uh, what you've been preaching, produce this atmosphere. So keep on preaching for a little bit here. Come on. I said, okay. <laughs> He's working with the word you're hearing. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He does work with that, you know. As long as we work with the word, he'll work with us. Yeah. <laughs> He's not working with us. He's working with the word. Yeah. And since we're preaching the word, he'll work with us. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God. <laughs> so we see righteousness and the revelation of it is the critical component, the golden key, the master key, if you will, to spiritual maturity. Um, let, let me, I'm getting into something, but I just don't think we can quite get there unless we look at this this part right here. Go with me to 2 Corinthians. And I want to talk about the administration of the new covenant for just a minute. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And I want you to look at what it says in verse 6. It says, Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament. That's dispensers of it. The Amplified Classic says, He's made us fit qualified, worthy, and sufficient as ministers and dispensers of a new covenant. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I know. Whoa. So here's what he says about that. He says, but not of the letter. Yeah. Of the Spirit. Yeah. So this isn't about just the message I'm preaching. There's a dispensing of the spirit that's inside these words. It's, ha it's happening. The Holy Ghost is being dispensed right here, right now. All of his attributes, all of his power, all of his glory, all of his anointing, anything he can do. Just like he was hovering over the world and God said, like me. He's hovering over you right now to make these words come to pass. So he said, if the administration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious. So that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance. And that glory was fading and would be done away with. 
how shall not the administration of the Spirit, say, of the Spirit, of the Spirit. be rather glorious? Yes. Amen? Amen? The administration of the Spirit is rather glorious. Yes. More glorious. Four. More. Verse 9. And this is huge. Four. If the administration of condemnation carries glory. Much more does the administration of righteousness exceed in glory. Now glory has a weight to it. It is heavy laden with everything good. It's excessively heavy. And you can only handle it to degrees that your foundation can support it because it'll crack that fake stuff, see. <laughs> That's why a lot of glory doesn't come in churches. The furniture can't handle the weight. I'm serious. We've got wicker chairs and thousand pound fat carnal saints and crash. You let God sit on you and see what happens. Wow. Suck the breath out of your lungs. So we have to begin the process of learning the laws that govern getting the foundation that will allow us to advance to the place Amen. where we will be granted access. Amen. And that's really what the Lord sent me in here to talk about tonight. And so I'll at least get to the opening scripture in a minute. <laughs> point I'm trying to make. In fact, I like this. The Aramaic Bible reads this way, Aramaic Bible in plain English, for if the administration of a guilty verdict was certain glory, how much more shall the administration of righteousness superabound in glory? Mm -mm -mm. Isn't that powerful? Glory to God. J.B. Phillips reads this way, what a much more glorious thing is the new administration of the spirit of life. So the spirit of righteousness and a revelation of it, see. It says, strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now you can peel out several things in those verses, but what it tells us very clearly is it's impossible to grow and become spiritually mature to even know what belongs to us without a revelation of righteousness. Amen. We won't believe it belongs to us if we have condemnation. That's we won't right. go get it. We don't believe it's right. We have a right to it. See, right. This is why the scripture says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Well, that verse alone tells us we have a right to absolutely everything in the kingdom. In the kingdom. It's supposed to be added to me. But I'm not going to let that happen or give myself permission to go there unless I believe I have a right to it. Wow. So we see clearly by the Spirit of God here then that, that he says there are things he can't say to you till you get this revelation. Oh, that's right. yeah. A lack of revelation of righteousness will dull your hearing. Yeah. As much he wants to say to you, mm. but you can't hear it because yeah. you don't believe it's right for you to do it. Mm. Wow. You got all these reasons why yeah. you're not the one. And I'm not really talking about, you know, we, we talk in ministry terms so much because that's who I am, what I do. But I'm talking about the supervisor at the job. Yeah. Or owning the franchise. Yeah. Instead of just working there. Or <laughs> talking about the anointing to be a king. So let's get out of the ministry side because most of the people in the room aren't called to do what I'm called to do. And you'd be out of order if you did it because you're not called to do it. I'm called to dispense this to you so you can go do what you're called to do. In full. Hold your place. Glorify Him. Do it with miracles and not lose your reward. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. So strong meat belongeth to them. So it's a study of what belongs to us, them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern. The number, one, the number one revelation a person needs to begin the process of a heightened, sharp discernment, whether God's talking or not, is a revelation of righteousness. Amen. Yes, sir. 
you get a revelation of righteousness, suddenly the spirit of discernment kicks in. Because yeah. he won't talk doubt and unbelief and condemnation Amen. to you. He won't. Wow. That can't be his voice. That's not who he is. That's, that's not the way the Holy Ghost talks. He's the spirit of truth. He's going to say the truth whether you feel like it or not. So I learned a long time ago, he doesn't change. So if anybody's going to do the changing, it's going to be me. But the agent of change is in the room. Glory to God. There are miracles of sudden change. That water became wine by the time it was carried. By the time you get to your car, things can change. Glory to God. Now, the very first word of Hebrews 6, 1 is therefore. Mm. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works or faith towards God, the doctrine of baptisms, the laying on of hands, and resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this will we do if, That means you can't just decide, well, I'm going to do that. I'm going I'm to I'm handle these. By verse 5 it says, we've tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. So good. I like what one translation says. It says the power of the age that's breaking in. Okay. Powers of the future world. These are the mighty works. Say mighty works. mighty works. These are the things we're called to handle in His name. The works that I do shall He do, and greater works than these shall He do, because I go to the Father. We have access to this. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. He's not talking about that little mansion over in glory. He's talking about, I prepared a place in the Spirit where you hold the same position with the Father that I hold. Oh, that's what He's talking about. You are in the same place in relationship to the Father that I am. So when you use my name, it'll work for you like it worked for me because you hold that place with the Father that I hold. God, it's a place in the Spirit. It's a place you've got to see yourself worthy to occupy. It's a, it's a place where when your kids scream, Mama, Mama, I don't feel good. And i got 103 fever. And you've been watching more commercials. Then you have the covenant of healing. So your faith is a little bit stronger in Tamiflu and the flu season. Since when does flu get a season? Huh? Now I'm talking about the works that the priest of the house has the authority to do in the name of Jesus. That our congregation ought to be doing all the time. Huh? Instead of one seven hundred good luck package dial a friend, they go in there and put their hand on their child's head and say, "In the name of Jesus, you foul flu, you bow your knee." This house doesn't tolerate sickness in Jesus' name. Wow. And they go, "Oh, oh, oh!" Tuck his tail between his legs and run off. Because it's weak when it comes up against that name used by faith in that name. Wow, glory to God. We've got to get that going. Well, here's the thing. We'll never give ourselves permission to do that. We'll be calling the prayer line. <laughs> Unless we get a revelation with the righteous of God in Christ. <laughs> oh, but the day that shifts in our heart. So evidently it's this foundation, because he uses the word foundation. Foundational principles. Yes. Therefore leaving, therefore leaving, therefore leaving. He just started talking to us about a revelation of righteousness. Bringing discernment, the ability to hear, to know what strongly belongs to us, to become a full age. Maturity that will permit me into the other things. So the foundation that incorporates all of those doctrinal principles is I am the righteousness of God in Christ. When you see that? Yeah. That's the proper, it's the only foundation in the spirit that can handle the weight of the glory. Amen. The administration of righteousness exceeds in glory. Yes. So we've got to get this fixed in the body of Christ Amen. if we're ever going into the glory. If the glory is ever going to manifest. Now, um, 
You can almost not study any great move of God that didn't start with repentance. And you want to know why? Because repentance doesn't make God move. Repentance changes your heart toward what God wants to do. You change your mind and you feel clean and cleansing comes and it positions your heart to be able to believe God will do something for me now because I'm I'm right with him. You see it? You see it? That's why it's the precursor of all revival. Great moves of God come when people's hearts shift. Well, a revelation of righteousness will fix your heart about who you are and how you stand before him so that you can become what he called you to be. Come on. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Mm -mm -mm. It will permit you in. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now I want to, I'm going to do my best, not that I won't open this back up and read another scripture, but I'm doing my best not to preach a six-week series on Saturday night. <laughs> because I really have preached up to the portal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Truly I have. Because what God dealt with me about so strongly is the understanding of the permission in. Mm. The understanding of the permission in. I want you to write down a few verses you can read on your own time. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12 says that when the prophets who were called seers, when the prophets who were called seers they asked the Lord when they would see things in the Spirit. When's this going to happen and who's this belong to? Now you can go read it there. It's in 1 Peter 1. And it says the only thing they were told was that they were not ministering those things for themselves, but for us. <clears throat> so all those prophets saw our day. Oh, glory to God. And they were preached by these prophets that were sent to preach with the Holy Ghost that came down from heaven. Well, the Holy Ghost showed them things that they preached and prophesied, which even the angels desired to look into. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. Now, now, now let's look at this because, let's, let's look at, let's look at, yeah. I really want to just leave you with just at least, at least one hook to the spiritual law that governs this because uh, there's some things imparted here. And I know Brother Gerald, I know them, they're givers. Uh, and certainly there's no copyright. We're going to go into these things in the morning as well. And honestly, I would encourage you to get in the morning to complete what the Spirit of God is doing yes, in the work. Absolutely. Okay? Because I know you have assignments. Go do your assignments. But get this, apprehend this, because I'm just opening up something that we'll get into in the morning. Because it's, I'll be telling you, and, and, and if you are a member of this church, and you know people that need to be here, you better get them here. Because this church is going somewhere from this meeting. Glory to God, I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost. And the same revelation will take these other churches into something, into the next phase. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. God is, he wouldn't have me preach this if he wasn't reaching out his hand and saying, I'm offering you to step on into a different place. It's, just, it's time now. It's time. Quit, quit, dis, quit discounting yourself. Quit disqualifying yourself. I'm asking you to step up, step out, and step in. Do something about where you're supposed to be going. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Now, in saying that, let's look at a couple more scriptures so that we can, you know, find a way to hook and unhook and all that. But 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter talks about this. I already gave you 1 Peter 1. But in 2 Peter 1, I'd like to actually look at this one briefly. <clears throat> because he says in verse 3, he says in 2 Peter 1, 3, that these exceeding great promises, by them we can be partakers of the divine nature. And he talks about like precious faith and the knowledge of those promises in verses 3 and 4. And that we have already been given. In fact, look at it right here. It says in verse 3, actually look at verse 3. According as His divine power, His what? Divine power. 
hath already given us. Yes. You already have it. You already have it. Well, now, now I'm going to ask you a question. According as His divine power. Power is the conduit through which all these things come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see that? Yes, sir. According as His divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, or the godly life you're to have. Come on. So if you've been given all things by the power, then wouldn't you say you possess the power? Amen. Oh, come on now. Yes. Hadn't you been given all power? Yes. All power is given unto me. Your power can be given. Power is transferable. Amen. That's why laying on of hands works. That's right. yes. wow. yeah. Praise the Lord. So he says we're given it. Now, they're called to glory and virtue. But then there's several verses in there where he says, besides this, give diligence to add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge and so forth. I want you to see something here by verse 8. Let's just pick up in verse, actually in verse 9. Let's pick up in verse 9. It says, well, I guess verse 8 was good. For if these things be in you and abound. Now look, look, look. This is possible. It is possible for a believer to get to this place. If these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now here's something that I, I might have to stretch you to believe. Is the verse above it. The verse above it. Godliness and brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness to charity. Now this, uh, I should be the verse after it, excuse me. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his own sins. Has forgotten. That means he wants to do it. Yeah. And when you let them slip, when you lose your ground, you'll start losing the things that you possess. Next verse. Wherefore, the brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Now, here's the one that's going to stretch you. For if you do these things, that's a far cry from the old doctrine that says you sin every day in word, thought, and deed. So you're not an old sinner saved by grace. You can get to a place. Glory to God. Now I'm not talking about cocky. At this point, you're the most humble. But you know who you are in Him because you had to die. You couldn't do it anyway. All right, then verse 11. Oh, oh this really, this is it. For so an entrance. Mm -mm -mm. This is the whole point. Allowed in, access. Permitted in, an entrance shall be ministered to you. Abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You can't just go traipsing in to spiritual things. Not everybody's allowed in there, even Christians. Flesh won't glory in his presence. So you can't, this flesh you can't take into the glory. All right, now, all of that was said to deal with the idea of Colossians, Colossians chapter 2, verse 18. I want you to see this because this is huge. And this is where we'll find our segue. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility, worshiping of angels. Now, look at this key. Look at this word, intruding. Intruding into those things which he has not seen. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. I'm going to make a statement to you by the Spirit of God, and you need to hear it. Several statements. A vision is not an imagination. The mind cannot produce divine encounters. Which is why the Apostle Paul said, I didn't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Folks got their faith in the wrong thing. They got a faith in a message. That's 
Oh, and, lo yeah. and lots of folks can transfer information. Yeah. Yeah. You can learn how to teach. You can, if you're, and the Lord, if it's the Word, there's an anointing on the Word. So when you start speaking the Word, the kind of an anointing will come with it. And that doesn't mean it's ever going to produce any miracle. Because right. yeah. just because the Word's anointed doesn't mean the person's anointed. Amen. Yeah. Because if he hadn't seen that revelation, if he's, yeah. he's intruding into the office yeah. or she, yeah. you got to be permitted in there. You got to be allowed in there, and it comes by revelation, yes, seeing. Yes. See, that's why one of his names is Jehovah Jireh. Yes. The Lord our provider is the supply, the great mountain of the Lord. Actually, the word is not Lord our provider. The actual Hebrew, the name means the Lord who sees and will see to it. Yes. The word Ra or Ra'a means to see, yes. and actually, the reason he named it Jehovah uh, Jireh is because the Jehovah Jireh means in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Wow. You cannot have a provision you can't see. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I'm telling you, if you can't see it, you can't have it. If you can't see it, you can't go into it. It's, and according to John 3, Jesus said, right, except the man be born again, he cannot, he cannot enter the kingdom. Excuse, I apologize, I've tricked you there a little bit, but, but John 3 Except a man be born again. I believe it's verse 5. He says, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom. Yeah. Right? That's right? But that's not the first thing he said about entering the kingdom. Yeah. Two verses above it, he said, you have to perceive, you have to see it. Yeah. Unless you see it, you can't enter into it. Yeah. So the key to entering into anything in the spirit, in the kingdom, is revelation knowledge is what allows you entrance. If you can see it, you can have it. And this is what happened with Elijah and Elisha. I'll just make this statement. He said, Lord, I want, he said, I want a double portion of your anointing. He said, if you see me when I go, it'll be so. You've asked a hard thing. He said, you've asked a hard thing. Didn't mean it was hard to receive it. He meant, you've asked me for double what I've got. So if I've got $100 and you asked me for $200, you've asked a hard thing because I can't give you but 100 because that's all I've got. I can't give you what I don't have. So I got this anointing by revelation. Yeah. 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 That's what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. So the only way you can get double, you have to get the way I got it. Yeah. If you see me when I go, yeah. Yeah. you see that? It shall be so. Yeah. And if you don't see me, it shall not be so. And so when he saw him, oh, there's so much here. But here's the point. The Lord spoke a, a word to me here in the back to tell the people here. He said, he said this, if you can see it, because it's a mantle that fell. What did he do? He tore his clothes, picked the mantle up, and wrapped himself in it. So he walked up to the river. He didn't say, where's the Lord God of Elisha? He said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? Whack! He hit the river, and that mantle that was on Elisha did the same thing for Elisha as it did Elijah. The river didn't know which way to run. When it met with that thing that it had experienced before, whoop, it ran away again. Why? Because if you can see it, yes. you can wear it. Amen. That's what the Lord told me to tell you. If you can see it, glory to God. 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 Glory me to God. Glory to God. He promised me, just as real as the miracles that are happening in bodies, He told me in this room tonight there would be the releasing of the anointing to see. You see, there is the anointing to open. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He hath anointed me to open the eyes of the blind. There's an anointing to open, and there's an anointing to see. What's been obscured to you before, this anointing can come to cause you to see. It can pull the scales off. It can pull the curtain back. It can get you over into it. It can permit you to what you've been praying about for the last 10 years. Glory to God. You can see yourself in a certain nation that you don't even know anybody there. But the doors are open. But they're not going to open in the natural. They're not going to open by a bunch of phone calls. They're not going to open by just being... No, they're going to open in the Spirit first. Yeah, yeah. You'll pray over into it. You'll see over into it. That's what Paul did. He wanted to go to Asia. Nope. Bithynia. Holy Ghost forbade him. But 
when he, when he prayed about it, he had a vision in the night. A man was in Macedonia. Come over here and help us. He saw himself in Macedonia. And the whole team packed up and went. And Philippi and the earthquake. The book of Philippians is ours. Because he saw into that nation. Then when he went there, he broke the back of poverty over all those churches. Woo! Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Every man in here and woman in here that's overseeing a group of people has to see your church has purpose. Has to see it has a call. There's a reason we do what we do. And glory be to you. understand? And I see it working. And I see it succeeding. And I see it growing. Glory to God. If you're in business somewhere and you know you're in the right job, then see yourself running the department. God needs the righteous to rule. He needs the godly to be calling the shots. I'm telling you, if Jacob could get with Laban, and he could be a deceiver, and everything he touched prospered, all because Jacob was just there, I don't care how rotten the business is, as long as you're there, it'll prosper. Glory to God. But you've got to stop looking at the business as your supply and the covenant as your supply instead of saying, I just wish they'd promote me. I just don't understand I'm not making enough. Realize, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm called so that this anointing can help this thing grow and it'll... Ex- yeah. Yeah. But you got to see it. you got to see that these anointings that start merging Create an increase that one person can create. And that's the purpose of even partnership. It's happening in the room right now, I'm telling you, by the Spirit. He said in the room, there'll be an anointing to see. He he said to me, one of the greatest miracles that's going to happen tonight is people are going to be able to see their way into things. What you hadn't been able to figure out how to do, you're going to see. See how to do it. (laughs) An abundant entrance shall be ministered to you. I believe the anointing of the seers in the room. Tomorrow, and and I'm not really trying to, you know, (laughs) I guess drum up business for y'all to get the CD, but I'm just telling you, I think it would encourage you. Because I'm going to deal with the ministry of Jesus. You need to understand that even Jesus, as anointed as he was, never stepped into the next level of the greater miracles till his father showed him what to do. I can take you through the scripture and tell you that the whole reason that he came out of the bosom of the father was so that the father could be interpreted and brought out where he could be seen. So when he's operating in the knowing gifts, and he saw Nathaniel. Behold, indeed, it is Israel. He saw him. And he said, well, before you came here, I saw you under the victory. I mean, it just stunned Nathaniel. How did you see me? Now? How you know me never having seen me? He said, oh, I saw you sitting under the victory. He called him the Messiah. He said, you did? He said, yeah. He said, oh. he said, you believe because you've seen this? You're going to see. Greater things than these. Yeah. You're going to see the heavens open. Preach. You're going to see the angels ascending and descending. Yeah. On the sun. And when the man was healed of five portraits of sick folk, and they accused him of blasphemy because he said, My father work and hitherto I work. I work and hitherto my father works. Make himself equal with his father. And they thought, you know, they said he was blasphemous. And they called him on the carpet about it. He said this. He said um, in John chapter 5 verse 20. He said, you shall see greater things than these. And up to that point, he had not raised the dead. For the Father loveth the Son. He showeth him all things. He himself doeth. Do you see that? Yeah, you need to back up one verse, please. 
He showeth him all things that he himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. Look at the next verse. For as the Father raises the dead and quickens them, even so the Son will quicken whom he will. The inference is, yeah. I'm never going to raise the dead until he shows me. He shows yeah. But when he shows me, I'm going to do it. Glory. 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 You see? Glory. And until you see it, you're intruding. So even Jesus in his earthly ministry grew in the anointing as he was faithful. So when he did what he saw to do, the Lord showed him other things to do. Anybody blessed tonight? Anybody glad you came to church? I'm telling you. Give the Lord a shout in the house. Hallelujah. Yeah, glory to God. Come on now. Hallelujah. Yeah, glory to God. 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 You know, at the, end, at the end of Psalm 22, which is a psalm that I believe Jesus quoted on the cross uh, during his passion, at the end of it, it says, of course, it starts off with, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? But by verse 31, it says, it talks about his name and his righteousness. His righteousness. And then it says, look, they shall declare his righteousness unto people that shall be born. And we hear, and the King James says, it is finished. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But I have this phrase in my heart, and I, will, <laughs> and I want to say this to you. Because it is finished is equal to this phrase. This phrase means it is finished. That he hath done it! Yes. Yes. He's done it! Yes. Yes, he's done it. Woo! Lord Jesus, I believe when hands are laid on me that I'll be healed. Now, he done it! Glory to God. He had done it. And look at that. What happened when his zip is finished? We get to declare his righteousness. The declaration of righteousness, the preaching of the revelation of righteousness, is the announcement. It is finished. He has done it. So when I believe I've been made righteous, I don't believe he's going to do it. I believe he's done. So you can see righteousness in a revelation that gets you on the it is finished side. Woo! A person believes they're righteous, it's easy for them to call those things to be not as though they were because they already are. <laughs> Woo! It's done! It's done! It's done! It's done! It's done! It's done. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for how we need to just administrate this by the Spirit of God. Glory to God. And I, I do see it and I do know it. And uh, praise the Lord. How many of you tonight know that when I said what I said, the anointing to see, there was an anointing that that was one of the things he was going to do. One of the miracles he was going to do is create an anointing to see. How many of you, since that just went through you like a spear and you realized, whoa, dear God, that's why I'm here tonight. Yes. Then, then if you're believing to see and believing to go into that next place and permission in, put your hands up. I want to pray for you right now. We're going to get this right. Whatever it is, we're going to get it right. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to see how. Woo! Power God's all over you. I don't know what you're believing for here, but you just have it. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, now listen, I believe in laying on hands. I, I'm unusually anointed, a special anointed to lay hands on people. But there comes an anointing in the room to where it's almost like if I start laying hands on folk, it takes it to a lower place. Something's happening in here, in the room right now. There's something going on in the room right now. 
It's blowing by you. It's your passing by moment. It's glory. You will see your way into it. Yes, you will. Glory to God. Yeah, into the next place. How, into the next leg of the race. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> and how it's going to take place. And the people and the supply and the help. You're going to see how. Yeah, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do you believe that, brother? You believe that? <laughs> then have it. Glory, glory to God. Yes, 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 yes. I see how to do this. Say that with me. I see how to do this. Do it. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> Bless him real good, Jesus. Glory. <laughs> Enjoy it. Hallelujah. Woo! I see how to do this. Woo! Hallelujah. Where's that sprinting daughter of yours? She around here? Come here, Sprinter. Which one's got the come here, Justice? Oh, come here, hurry. Stand right there. Say this out loud. I mean loud, strong. Ready? I see, I see myself, myself winning that race. Winning that race. Whoa! Whoa! I believe I receive it. Therefore, I do have it. He hath done it. He hath done it. Woo! Glory. Glory to God. Now, I'm just telling you, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, and anybody watching online, you need to do that right now. He's the one who hath done it. Glory to God. He's the champion inside your heart. Receive him. Say, Lord, take my life and do something with it. Glory to God. If you need to make an adjustment, now's the time to make that adjustment. We shouldn't have to sing 500 verses of Just As I Am without one plea. It's time for you to move. Step up, step in, and step out. Make the adjustments. Repent over the pullback, the delays, the cutting yourself short, the saying you're unqualified and all that. Just repent over that doubt and unbelief talk because you know it's not of God. Isn't that right? Praise the Lord. Now, and I wanted to just share that so that anybody that needs to make those adjustments can. But the final thing I'm to do tonight is to now release that unusual anointing for creative miracles. If you need an anointing, if you need healing in your body, as the Lord first mentioned before we started, it's yours. It's yours. I do believe there are several that need a healing in their body, certainly. And anywhere you need healing, that's great. But especially like the Lord mentioned. Is it, are you one? Obey God. Okay. I know the power of God's already been ministered to you, but you're not the only one. So anybody else that needs to come, come and we'll, we'll just make room. Because we're not going to be in this. Yeah, it's already yours. He has done it. Yeah. And this is what I came to do. <laughs> to, but I need some help, brother. Uh, uh, listen, I don't, I'm just telling you. I'm not here by myself. See, so, so I'm not... <laughs> I'm not... Uh, and don't touch it if you would. Just, that, that just be, the, be at the ready as courteous assistance. Glory to God. So understand, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So keep your eyes open. Now! In the name. There it is. Glory to God. Now when I lay my hands on you, even though I've already done so, this is different. This is that literally creative, miracle-working, recreating power. And I'm going to start with you. And it's going to go through your body like electricity if you'll receive it. There it is right there. You feel that? And it affects a healing and a cure. Because Jesus of Nazareth is touching his daughter. Yes. 
<laughs> In Jesus' name, be made whole. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> be made whole. I stood in front of you, Michelle, and I want you to look at me. I'm going to make this real simple. I heard this phrase for me to tell you. Draw the line. You have no legal right, Satan. Get out and get off of me in the name of Jesus now. I drew the line. Bam, step over it. That's it. Then be made whole. There it is right there. Settle that forever. Settle that forever. And I also come against the emotional, mental assault. Now, I'm not, people shouldn't put their own mind on this, neither should you. But the ministry, in and of the vicarious nature of people, have taken a toll on your soul. But you're being renewed, re-energized, healed, and you are literally going to roar like a lion at the gate. There'll be no such thing as a hint that you ever went through it, that you took these hits and it bounced off, just rolled off. Glory be to God and no residual impact. Yeah, I'll tell them. Oh, wow. I've never heard that, but I'm going to obey you. Death, where is your sting? Come on. These words of death that have been spoken shall have no sting in your life. Glory to God. Glory to God. They're not words of life these people have been speaking. They've been meant to bring a sting. And the stinger's out and the venom's gone. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We were standing, standing, standing for a friend of mine yeah. in the hospital, multiple organ failure. And I'm going to go Let's get this. lay hands on him. And, well, put and your right hand out, please. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. There's a power guy. I'm yes, doing. yes. Amen. Years ago, this started when he spoke to me. He said, I want you to take handkerchiefs and cloths and minister. And I'm talking about years ago. I said, all right, Lord, but I won't initiate that. You have to, And people sovereignly, supernaturally started bringing them. Yeah. And so uh, ever since then, because of that anointing, Okay, that special anointing, it's yeah. special miracles. Then it goes into this cloth, and yes. you, I can see in your eyes, you know it. Yeah, you, you got faith yes, to believe I it, do. and you own, you yourself are anointed. Your ministry is anointing, and the healing works through you. At the same time, we're going to attack this yes. with yes. the special Amen. anointing. Yes, sir. In the name of yes. Jesus name Christ of, Jesus. of Nazareth. Yes. Now I command in Jesus name. The great, mighty, yes. miracle yes. healing anointing. Yes. Live! Yes. Hallelujah. And do not die. Organs? Yes. Come alive. Yes. Defy every aspect of conventional wisdom. Yes. Yes. Doctors are doing their best, yes. but there's a turnaround. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. And there's a turnaround in your ministry. Hallelujah. And you're going to see more miracles and more healings from this day forward. Yes. Than you've ever walked in before. So walk in there. Yes. Hallelujah. There it went right there. That's what came on you back there. Hallelujah. When I ministered to you back there, that's what came on you, but you needed to know what it was. Yes, sir. It's yes, a new sir. mantle. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yeah. If Hallelujah. you can see it, you can wear it. Yes, sir. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! I'm a, I can sense it. It's only strong. I'm going to start moving a little, a little more quickly. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I, I don't know that everybody has had, that everybody's issue is down in here. I don't know that it is, but for many it is. And I saw the Lord tell me to have you do something. So take both hands and put them just like this. Put one hand over the top of the other one. There it is. In the name of Jesus, be made. Whoa, y'all better pay attention now. Yeah. I told you it was strong. Yes. Put, put, no, do that. Do that now. What you did. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. There it went. There it went. Ha! Down inside of you. There it goes right there. Hey, buddy, come here. Oh, sweetheart. There'll be no residual effect here. There'll be absolute and complete. No smell of smoke here. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Already a miracle. Wait till they see hair start growing in those the, the, yes. those areas of this scalp. <laughs> Wait till. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God, glory to God, by the authority of the name of Jesus that makes all things new be recreated in every fiber of your being. Whoa, there it is, big guy. Wow, you got that, didn't you? Woo! Hallelujah, glory to God. Mom and dad, right? Mom and dad, come here, I want to minister to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stand right there beside him, okay? Hallelujah. Father, by the authority of the name of Jesus. Yeah, I'll say that. Yeah. I heard the Holy Ghost say, Never again. Yeah. That's done. Amen. Boom. Amen. Hands off, Satan. No fear. None. Never again. Glory to God. Woo, glory. Glory. Hey, sweetie. Hallelujah. Do what I ask you to do here. Put my hands right here. One on top of the other. Right here on your belt. There we go. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Oh, take a deep breath. There's that healing power. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I've never had the Lord to have me tell this to any, any person I ever remember in ministry. Now, I've preached it many times to people to believe. But to an individual, I've never heard him say this. He said, tell her, it will never be hard for her to get healed. Be healed. He's right there. I've never had him say that to another person. It's going to be like, just like, it's going to be the easiest thing you've ever done. To keep sickness off your body. Now don't let that slip. So good. Glory to God. So good. Whoa. That's good. When the head of the church says it. Oh. Folks, the anointing is just thick, thick, thick in here. We have ours. We have it. Now put that hand on top of that one. There we go. I just had this little flash. This is something else that had never happened to me. I don't know what's going on, but you know, male and female, they become one, and that we're bone of each other's bone, the flesh of each other's flesh. I don't know exactly what's going on, but when I shut my eyes, all of a sudden I saw my wife, and I saw her standing here ministering with me. And I'm telling you about the Holy Ghost, when I lay hands on you, it's going to be as if she was physically standing here with me, the two of us ministering to you together. Glory. Tadasi, our child, be made whole in Jesus' name. You're not a person that doesn't understand how to resist fear. You're not a person that's full of fear. But again, I hear the Spirit of God saying, have no fear. Fear has no place here. There'll be no fear concerning any of these symptoms or whatever it is you're believing for or the future. I keep picking up that the whole idea is the devil's wheedling in to try to get us to accept some fear. Maybe not about the current situation, but about the world and the future and the stuff we're going to have to fight. We break the power of that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. He's more than a match for it. Your Lord that lives in you is more than a match for it. He has done it. And we receive it tonight. There it went right there. Something changed, didn't it? <laughs> what happened to you when I said those words? Something went down inside of you, didn't it? It just went down. In, did you feel it go in? Whoa. That's the Creator. He's literally has hands on your organs right now. He's got this. <laughs> Oh, these are the miracles. I saw stuff moving around. There's stuff moving around inside of you. Woo! 
So in the name of Jesus, be made whole. It went right. Whoa. Glory. <laughs> Glory to God. Raise both hands up, everybody in the house. Father, we love you. We thank you. We bless you. We're so grateful to you for who you are and what you've done in our midst. We are not leaving here the same. Oh, glory to God. There's miracles of sudden change, and it's happened for us already during the flow of the meeting, in the meeting, here at the altar, and before we get into the car, things have flipped on a dime. <laughs> and we thank you for it, and we believe we receive it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory be to God. Listen, whoever's dealing with this, there's skin conditions of all kinds of being healed, particularly scalp situations. You're being healed. People don't know, but you deal with it, and all kinds where your skin gets involved. Any type of an allergy, any type of an issue, any type of scaling, any type of red whelping, by the authority of the name of Jesus, it is leaving your body now in the name of Jesus Christ. Of Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I saw it in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, thank you. This is the wildest thing. Man, such unusual words of knowledge. The Lord told me to say this to, to the folks in the room. Do you not know that I created muscle fibers? Do you not know that I can touch those muscles to rapidly gain strength and reproduce? Do you not know that this is how, when I speed up the recovery from a surgery, it takes place in my people? Or when it defies chronological age or loss of hormones, and you're losing muscle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need my people to be strong in every arena. And to live long in every arena. I need these anointings, saith the Lord. And I heard the word bone density. I heard the word. Now, I understand osteoporosis, but particularly bone density. And bones that begin to thin. And the density begins to wane. In the name of Jesus, do you not know I make bone, a bone of mine wasn't broken? Do you not know and understand that I am the life? Are you not bone of my bone? Are you not muscle of my muscle, flesh of my flesh, sinew of my sinew? You can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. Do what you know to do in the natural, and I will expedite the strength and the development if you'll believe me, saith the Lord. And that is across the board. I really sensed in my spirit that it has to do with athleticism and athletics, but I also sense in my spirit it has to do with some older folk that need to be strong and vivacious and quick on their feet to carry out God's plan. So both of those arenas he's touching tonight in the room. Wow. There's someone that they're, as strange as this may sound, I don't know if it was an accident, I don't know what it is. You thought you had vertebrae or nerve problems or whatever, and it's your neck. But you need a strengthening of the muscles in your neck. And it's the muscles that are in your neck that are going to eliminate this issue and that that's what you're experiencing. And in Jesus' name, there's a strengthening that's going to hold things and keep them in alignment. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So don't buy into the lie. That <laughs> you might have to have surgery or back surgery or something. No. No. There's healing in the room. Wow. What a night. I just heard the Spirit of God say circulation. Hmm. Circulation. I heard that when I was looking over here, particularly when I was looking at you. Is it you? Yeah. Oh, come here. 
Is it your hands and wrists? Because I saw it in your wrists. Yeah. Is it your hands? Do you go numb in your hands at all? Tingling sometimes, a little numb. Uh huh. Well, that's going to be taken care of tonight. When I turned and looked at you and I saw your arm right here, I saw, and literally I saw, it was circulation. And uh, this will not happen again. Amen. They can call it anything they want. They can call it carpal tunnel syndrome. They can call it whatever they want to call it. So good. But there ain't none of you that's fallen asleep Amen. in this most important day. Amen. So awake unto righteousness. And be healed and be made right. Circulation. You know, I kept, I guess, come back now a second time. I kept, when I, when I looked at you, it was the first time I got that word about your voice. I went that direction spiritually and the naturally, but, but I had, I, it's a word about the throat. The throat. And, and it can just come back a second time. If there are more than one individual in here that's had difficulty with their throat, not only their voice, but their throat consistently, concurrently, that's being completely restored. That psychical pattern is leaving. The power of it is broken. Glory to God. Have you had any, any issues with that? Over the just physical? Well, see, yours was spiritual. It was that voice the enemy was coming against. But we stopped that. Now, we stopped the natural. In the room, we stop it. Now, Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just want to wait one more moment. I'm taking a little extra time even in preaching and ministry tonight because I know many of you have your own other services and I just really want to make sure we've done what we came to do tonight in this particular meeting. What is that, Lord? What are you saying about that? Paradeste, kardisto, kujumblo fradeste. I've got an unusual anointing right here on the top of my head. I really believe with all of my heart there's an unusual anointing coming on some of your souls and your mind. It's affecting the way you've been thinking and never some thoughts in the room destroyed tonight. You actually got delivered in your soul tonight during the ministry of the Word and such. And that anointing's there. It's called the mind of Christ. Now, <clears throat> I keep seeing this in the Spirit, so I want to obey the Lord. Yeah, glory. You feel it, don't you? It came on you, didn't it? <laughs> you see, you got to have that to preach. You can't preach out of your own mind. Glory to God. So, Lord, we thank you. Well, I want to encourage all of you to spend a little time. He's bringing this up to my spirit. So just spend a little time in Hebrews 11, 3 and realize. Don't let it slip. Get back on it. Receive it with your heart. You can frame your world with your words. Yes. Yes. Lord God. What you say is what you see. And what you see is what you'll do. Come on. Glory to God. I love you. Glory to God. Wow. Thank you for coming tonight. You got to find some place to just, you know, he's an eternal spirit. So he doesn't mind all night meetings, but you know, our, we, we live in natural bodies. So. But I do want to encourage you, if you know in your heart that you are connected and supposed to partner with the ministry and you can't be here tomorrow, please uh, visit the table. Let us sow those books into your life and connect. We love you with all our heart. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. God is so good. Thank you for coming out and, and joining us this evening. Uh, make sure you hug somebody's neck. Give them a Holy Ghost handshake. <laughs> I would say take them out to lunch or dinner, but take them out to breakfast or something. <laughs> and those that are watching, remember, you are who God says you are. <laughs>